Home buyers beware because this situation the Fed has put us in actually could be creating a crisis worse than ever. And actually, whenever they decide to actually lower interest rates, it actually could be worse for millions of Americans. I'll give you the details here in this video. Thank you so much for liking and sharing these videos. Take a look at this. So Federal Reserve Chairman Jerome Powell says that there has been, quote, a lack of further progress this year on inflation. So Federal Reserve Chairman Jerome Powell says that the U.S. economy has not seen inflation come back to the central bank's goal, pointing to the further unlikelihood that interest rate cuts are not coming any time soon. The recent data, quote, have clearly not given us greater confidence and instead indicate that it's likely to take longer than expected to achieve that confidence, he said during a central banking forum. This comes as mortgage rates are now at the highest level of the year and could still climb. You take a look here at Google, the 30-year fixed rate mortgage is almost at 8%, roughly 7.9% in California, the largest state population-wise. Go to other large state population-wise, New York, 7.949%. Yikes. Absolutely just criminal almost um wow go to texas 7.90 percent um wow arizona 7.95 percent wow these are absolutely just brutal brutal percentages 7.90 percent in ohio absolutely shocking and here is what could get even worse. The average U.S. home could actually spike up in price 20% to a record 500000 across the United States as an average if the Fed cuts interest rates too soon. So imagine prices spiking up when they actually cut prices. Here's why. Take a listen. I think that inflation is here to stay, Neil. I think you're going to have mortgage rates are going to be high. And I think that housing prices are going to continue to go up. Neil, if what President Biden said yesterday, he said that there might be a tax cut, excuse me, not a tax cut, a rate cut this year. If that happens, Neil, I think you could see housing prices go even higher. So by that argument, I think that, that a, a rate cut, whatever people think of the justification of that, uh, uh, it could be a little inflationary here. But what do you make of it? It could be very inflationary. And the problem is if you don't own a home and you don't own a home right now, you're going to have a two-pronged problem. Number one, you're going to have inflation, which means that just by time going by, the inflation, the house, the cost of the house will go up. The other thing is if the Federal Reserve comes in and, let's say, helps out a politician before an election and reduces rates even with a high inflation print, you could see those home prices go up, in my opinion, 5 10 20 percent. That would be just insane, Neil. You would start to have a buying frenzy again, much like during COVID. So I think right now the good thing is that mortgage rates are high. But if they lower those rates, those, those prices could skyrocket again. Indeed. It, a lot depends on those rates, to your point, Bill. And I caught up with Barbara Corcoran on this very subject. And what she says are some of the seminal inflection points she's looking for for real estate in general. Here's what she said on the matter. This is from Barbara Corcoran rates go down just another percentage point. That's what I'm hoping for by year and prices are going to go through the roof. And the so reason for that, that would be around 6% get yes, to that level. Because everyone will come out and buy. There are probably 10 buyers on the sidelines waiting for interest rates to come down that are actually active in the market. So everybody's going to charge the market. All right, now she's saying if they come down a point at that time, that would have brought us to around, you know, the, 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 the 6 percent level from the, around the 7 percent level we were at. That might be a tall task now. What do you think? Uh, she's exactly right. She literally said almost what I'm saying. And I think that, yes, if you had 1 percent uh, decrease in rates, that thing is going to go so high. Yeah. So new home buyers or people looking to go from one home to another 
just looking to move are really in a pickle. It's an absolute nightmare for people. It's, it's, it's the worst case scenario. Take a look here. When you go to the mortgage calculator here in Google and you put in a $400,000 home, which is, <laughs> you know, in some ways it's the average home price in America, but at some places you can't even buy a home for that price, you know, in the high cost of living areas. You let me know in the comment section what kind of home in your area you can buy for that price. Um, at 7.8%, which is what Google automatically put in there for the interest rate right now. That's $2,900 a month, almost $3,000, right, if you're round for a 30-year fixed rate mortgage at $400,000. But not long ago, you could get a mortgage rate at 3%, right? 3% just a couple years ago, right? Let's change this same mortgage, $400,000 at 3%, takes it to $1,686. We'll round that to $1,700. So... That 2900 goes to, for round number, 1700 Wow, what a difference, right? 2900 to 1700 That's $1,200 per month just in interest. Just in interest. And you take that times 12, that's $14,400 per year. In interest, guys, per year times 10 years, that's $144,000 in interest that you're paying to the bank. And remember, it was just, a, just what, two, three years ago that interest rates were at that price. That's how much of a difference this is costing Americans. And that's why you see headlines like this. More Americans say they are living paycheck to paycheck this year and then in 2023, here's why. And don't forget that these interest rates are also, credit card interest rates are at an all-time high. Pretty much almost everything with interest rates are at a multi-year high, decade high, uh, century high. Remember this century, right? 2020. Um a bad deal gets worse. Interest rates on retail credit cards hit a record high. This from Forbes here. What is the average credit card interest rate this week? The average credit card interest rate right now is 27.9%. We'll round to 28%, which is absolutely just unbelievable. What that means, if we're rounding here, that means you're paying 28% interest per year, per year, for roundabout numbers, right? And, um, wow, and, and it means it's going up here, so, because back in February, it was 22.6%, so it's going up, it's going up, wow. Credit card interest rate is the worst debt you can have. So if in doubt, try to pay that off first. Because, for example, if you have a $10,000 credit card debt, uh, you're paying 28% interest on that. On average, go ahead and check your interest rates. Uh, but that would mean you're paying about $2,800 in interest per year. And then you still have the $10,000 that you owe them. That's how banks get rich, and that's just one way, right? Uh, yeah, so that's why credit card interest rates are brutal. So if you think 7% or 8% interest rates on home mortgages are bad, think about a 28% interest rate. And of course, that's just the average. Some of your cards might be lower. Some of your cards might be higher. And there's really two ways to kind of attack that. You can attack the higher interest rate cards first or the lowest balance cards first and just pay off the balance, the lowest balance, and then just, you know, uh, put the card away and don't charge it up anymore. And then you, once that card's paid off, then you have that payment and then that you have freed up and then you can take that card monthly payment that you were making and then you can apply that towards the next lowest balance card and then take two payments and apply it 
you know, on the next cart. So it's kind of the snowball method. So uh, a lot of times that works better, even though there might be a lower interest card, you're still applying it and then you get a win. You're like, hey, I paid off a lower interest rate card or I paid off a lower balance card, but it doesn't matter. You're like, hey, I paid off a card, $500, $1,000, I paid it off, great. Now I can work on paying off the next card. And it's kind of it's kind of good because you're like, I paid off a card, and now I can work on paying on the next card or the next card. And you don't even really want to cancel them unless you absolutely have, you know, low willpower. Because if you cancel them, it'll actually lower your um, credit score. So, you know, if you have to, you have to. But don't necessarily cancel them. Just don't run up the balance. If you pay your card off in full every month, you won't pay any interest. Okay? So keep that in mind. Uh, you can set the card to pay off in full automatically if, if you want to, uh, but you've got to keep enough money in your checking account. So let me know your thoughts in the comments. I'll keep you up to date. For more information and uh, tips, make sure to subscribe down below. Click the bell icon after you subscribe. It's completely free to do so. Make sure to like and share these videos with anybody that needs to hear this information. I just did a really good video on banned foods in the United States that you might be eating. You can click here to see that. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.